Let's take a look at this painting. Aww, a cute little boy. Oh wait, another boy. They are so adorable. Let's back up a bit. Oh wow, they're angels? These winged angels are so popular, but why are they looking up? Let's see them back up even wider. Oh, there you go. This painting is called the Sistine Madonna, but it's the baby angels who stole the show. You know when you see a painting and your eyes can't help but immediately go straight to the cutest characters? Yeah, you can't help but get the same feeling with this painting as well. Since 1512, when this painting was made, it has captivated the world and made everyone ask, who are those winged angels? Why are they so famous? What is their role in the painting? Let's look at the painting. We see a harmoniously balanced design, practiced illusionism, and lots of church imagery. We see a woman depicting the image of Madonna holding the Christ child. She looks straight ahead as though she is carrying the baby to a particular place that's particularly important while walking elegantly with her bare feet. She is depicted as a beautiful, serene woman with a gentle, peaceful expression on her face. Green curtain parts before her as she strides across the clouds with the veil billowing in the wind. The green color symbolizes the mercy of God who sent his child into this world to die for others. But we will come back to the real identity of the model in this painting in a second. But wait, what are these faces hiding in the background? One of the most striking features of the painting is the many cherubs in the background. These cherubims, many of which are only vaguely visible in the cloudy sky, are depicted in various poses and with a range of expressions. This gives the impression of them being in heaven. But some believe that Raphael painted clouds in the form of angels. On the other hand, according to the teachings of the Gnostic, it's believed they are not angels but souls who have yet to be born. In most Christian art, angels are often depicted as messenger figures who serve as intermediaries between God and humanity. Whatever it is, it just gives the painting that divine feel and edge. Hmm, now I know you've probably seen these two puti that we started with almost everywhere and literally on everything. Talking about how famous these angels are is only stating the obvious, isn't it? The two puti or cherubic figures here are depicted as young chubby boys with wings. They are a common motif in the art of the Renaissance period. Putti were a popular subject in Renaissance art and were often depicted in a variety of roles including as symbols of love, fertility, and joy. In the Sistine Madonna, the two Putti are likely included as a way to add decorative elements to the painting and to symbolize the divine and innocent nature of the figures depicted in the center of the composition. Some legends say when Raphael was painting the model for the main figure of the painting, the Madonna, some kids would come out and Watch, and Raphael was so struck just by watching the children's adorable faces that he decided to add them to the painting. But who knows, they certainly aren't cute, aren't they? Their image has taken the world by storm. You may have seen them in postcards, magazines, journal covers, clothes, and elsewhere. In fact, the U.S. Post Office even used them for its 1995 set of stamps celebrating love. How appropriate. So after 500 years, one might even say these two angels are more popular than pop stars. On Madonna's left, we can see Saint Barbara, who was an early 3rd century Greek Christian saint and martyr. She stands out with her downward gaze, almost as if she is looking down toward the path of Madonna, inspecting the scene. So much so that you will think she didn't want to look into her eyes. And then on the right, our eyes are drawn to Saint Sixtus, an early martyr who the Pope insisted being the painting. Now a little bit about this painting. The painting was commissioned by Pope Julius II in honor of his late uncle, Pope Sixtus IV. It was meant to be an altarpiece for the Basilica Church of the Benedictine Monastery of San Sisto in Piacenza. Pope Julius II was one of the most influential figures of the High Renaissance. He also commissioned paintings from the very best artists like Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, and Raphael. It is said that Raphael had not yet turned 30 in the summer of 1512 when this painting was commissioned. Wow! 
Raphael was a master painter and architect who played a key role in the High Renaissance period. As Michelangelo said, Raphael has given to his figures the most divine beauty, so that we stand in awe before them. He was a man who had the ability to capture human form and emotion in his paintings, and this work certainly did just that. It is considered some of the finest of the Renaissance era. And there are some things that just make this painting stand out. This 265 by 196 centimeter oil painting on canvas has stood the test of time and even World War II. For nearly 250 years, the Sistine Madonna was admired only by the cloistered monks of San Sisto. It was not until 1754 that this painting was eventually sold and it moved to Germany, Dresden to be specific. This painting also broke the record as the most expensive painting ever in that year. It was bought by Augustus III of Poland for 120,000 francs. This painting struck the attention of many Germans. It became a trend for German kids to pose in the style of the two Putian pictures. Yet with all these, this painting came close to being burnt during World War II. As war raged in Germany, the city of Dresden was heavily bombed during World War II, but the Red Army was able to save it from being destroyed. The painting was first stored in a secret tunnel in Switzerland, before it was brought back to Russia where it went on a limited display at the Pushkin Museum in Moscow. The Soviets decided to return the art back to Germany in 1955, after the death of Joseph Stalin. Throughout researching this painting, I can't help but notice its uniqueness. Time and time again, I would wonder about the kind of artist Raphael was to create a piece of such beauty to charm people for generations. Before you move on to this next beautiful piece of art, press that subscribe button and leave a note in the comments on your favorite part of this painting. Au revoir till next time. May your life be artful.